So in this video, we're going to be discussing and demonstrating high velocity, low amplitude technique for the costal cage, specifically for inhalation and exhalation dysfunctions, also known as elevated ribs and depressed ribs, respectively. As a reminder for high velocity technique, it's a direct technique. So we're going to be positioning our segments towards the restricted barrier uh, as well. Uh, in terms of the amount of thrust we're going to be using, it's important to remember the name of the technique, high velocity, which is a quick movement over a short distance or low amplitude. So we're going to be applying a quick thrust over a very short distance. So it doesn't need to be a big uh, uh, crunching type motion. So one thing to consider with HVLA for the ribs is that the type of rib biomechanics that you are taking advantage of is it's bucket handle motion, not pump handle. So when you're making your contact with your thenar eminence on the superior aspect of that rib, you are essentially dropping that bucket handle. So if it's an inhalation dysfunction where the rib is stuck up, your position on the top of that rib is gonna help pull that bucket handle down. Now for an exhalation dysfunction, so let's say we had our exhalation dysfunction here, if the bucket handle was stuck downwards, we would put our thenar eminence on the inferior aspect of that rib angle, and that would allow us to pull that bucket handle up. So starting, we're gonna have our patient uh, cross their arms. And very similar to thoracic HVLA, we're gonna go far over near to move the scapula out of the way as much as possible. Now we're gonna have our patient roll towards us, or we're gonna roll our patient over, and then in, with our hand position, instead of uh, putting our thenar eminence at the transverse process, we're going to move lateral to the rib angle. And on my patient, I had previously diagnosed her with rib three inhalation dysfunction. So I'm going to find T3 and then move lateral to find that rib angle. And then I'm going to put my thenar eminence on the superior aspect of that rib angle. So what that's gonna allow me to do is when I roll my patient over onto that hand, onto my thenar eminence, and I apply my thrust, my thrust is gonna be in a force vector that's up towards that rib, but because my thenar eminence is on the superior aspect of that rib, uh, that thenar eminence is then gonna generate a kind of a opposite force uh, that is gonna be downwards, which is gonna allow that rib to move downwards into exhalation, which is the barrier of uh, motion. So again, on the superior aspect of the rib angle, then rolling over with their elbows in my epigastrum. And now you can also fine tune with a little bit of cradling. So go ahead and lift your head a little bit. And you can fine tune your restricted barrier. All right. And then once you have your direction of force, you have your patient, uh, take a deep breath in, go ahead, deep breath in and out. And with each breath, you want to increase your restricted barrier again and out. Now let's do it one more time. And at the end of their exhalation, I'm going to thrust downwards and upwards. Okay. Now I'm going to return them back to neutral. And then I would reassess the uh, rib in the same way that I had initially assessed it. Now moving down to our second diagnosis, I had previously diagnosed her rib six as um, a rib six exhalation dysfunction on the right side. So now for exhalation dysfunctions, we wanna position our thenar eminence opposite from what we had done for inhalation dysfunctions. And uh, for exhalation dysfunctions, we're gonna to want to position our thenar eminence on the inferior aspect of that rib angle. So I'm gonna have you uh, cross your arms again to roll her over to me and I'm going to be finding again the rib of interest. Here it is. <clears throat> now I'm not going to be positioning my thenar eminence on the transverse process. Instead, I'm going to come more lateral to the rib angle, find the inferior aspect of that rib angle, kind of wedge my thenar eminence underneath it. Now here, when I roll my patient over, I'm going to be shifting my force vector, not superior and posterior, but instead I'm going to be shifting it downwards towards my hand. 
Now that's going to allow my inferior posterior force vector to, to generate an opposite force vector from my hand that's going to allow the rib to be lifted superiorly into an inhalation position, which is its uh, restricted barrier. So let's find our restricted barrier. We could also use a little bit of cradling. So to engage a little bit more of that um, inhalation position, we can also side bend away. There we go. All right. And go ahead and take a deep breath in and a breath out. With each breath, I'm approaching the restricted barrier to a greater degree. And then with the, do one more. So now at the end of this breath, I'll thrust downward into my hand. And then I return her to neutral. And then I'd reassess that uh, costal segment in the same way that I did originally.